Big news as Canonical is going forward with dropping support for Xorg or X11 on their GNOME offering with Ubuntu 25.10. This is a big deal as the first major distribution that are planning on getting rid of X11 or Xorg in favor for Wayland. And they're not the only ones at this point going forwards with this as they've officially announced with Ubuntu 25.10 questing Polka. We are taking a significant step forward in the evolution of the Ubuntu desktop by removing the Xorg based Ubuntu session. Starting with the release of the Ubuntu session in GDM will run exclusively on Wayland. This decision follows the upstream GNOME's roadmap and aligns with our long-term strategy of delivering a secure, performant, and modern desktop experience. We're going to get into why they're making this change and how it'll affect users of Ubuntu and GNOME and some pitfalls to using the Wayland protocol. Although there are many projects going over to Wayland, there are still limitations of the Wayland protocol. We definitely want to talk about those, but before we do, let's talk about what the X window system is, also known as X11 or Xorg, as this is a very old project. For those of you unaware, here's some of the history. X originated as a part of the Project Athena at MIT in 1984. The X protocol has been at version 11, hence X11, since September of 1987. And the Xorg Foundation leads the X project with the current reference implementation, Xorg server, available as a free and open source software under the MIT license and similar permissive licenses. Now, this is very significant. As a lot of you are probably unaware, X11 has been the de facto windowing system and protocol in Linux for nearly 40 years. So this is a big deal that we're stepping towards Wayland. As in the grand scheme of things, it's still in its infancy when compared to the X windowing system. So what is the X windowing system there? or Xorg, or as some people call X11. And what is Wayland? How do they relate? Well, these are display server protocols. And they are the underlying systems that handle how our windows are displayed on the screen, how input is handled from the display, and how graphics show up on your screen in Linux and Unix-like based systems. Things they do are manage drawing the windows, moving, resizing them, taking user input from the keyboard and mouse. And Wayland is just a modern replacement for X11 designed from scratch to fix some of X11's flaws, making it simpler, faster, more secure, but it has downsides as well as we're gonna get into later. But let's get back into why Ubuntu is making the decision that they are to go Wayland. Before we discuss this further, take a moment and subscribe below. You wouldn't want to miss another video like this. YouTube can get finicky. Also, make sure to smash that like button on the way back up. With Ubuntu 25.10, GNOME with Xorg is no more. And why is Ubuntu making this change? Well, there's a pretty big factor involved in here, and it is the removal of Xorg support from the actual desktop environment. Over the past several cycles, the Wayland experience has matured significantly, including an improved support for NVIDIA drivers offering a more robust security model, stable support for most daily workflows, better graphics, stack isolation, and improved touch and high DPI support. Meanwhile, maintaining both X11 and Wayland sessions introduces technical debt and increases maintenance burden, limiting our ability to innovate efficiently, and GNOME is planning to remove Xorg support for GNOME 49, we are taking a proactive step in 25.10 to prepare our users and ecosystem ahead of the deadline. So a big reason for this push is with GNOME 49. GNOME is actually dropping support for its Xorg implementation, and that's a big deal too, as we're going to get into an announcement from GNOME on why they're doing this as well. But it's good to see massive distributions taking these proactive measures in order not to disturb the user's desktop experience as GNOME is the default desktop environment for Ubuntu, as well as many other large distributions. There's another distribution that's made the decision to go ahead and remove Xorg support as well, and that's Fedora. Fedora has also made and accepted the change request from their team and accepted Wayland only GNOME. They are going to remove the GNOME X11 packages from the Fedora repositories. All users of the X11 GNOME session will be migrated to the GNOME Wayland session. This was submitted just about a month ago and has been approved and accepted. As you see here, closed accepted. Don't mind the red, that's a little confusing. But this is another signal of a massive Linux distribution going over to Wayland only. Now, users of X aren't going to magically lose all their support here but it might be a jarring transition for some, especially with legacy 
hardware and drivers, a lot of people talk about having issues with NVIDIA graphics cards specifically. And towards the end of the video, we're gonna get into what NVIDIA has to say about all of this and its actual limitations of the Wayland protocol as they see it with their open source drivers now. But this is gonna have a large impact on Linux users as two major distributions have finally decided to make the move over to Wayland completely. And the commitment is here. And this is all first coming from the GNOME desktop project and an official commit that now will drop that X11 support. As we search here through the commit, we now notice comments about the commit and two stand out here. One being disabling X11 backend by default and dropping the X11 session restore. These are moves by the GNOME team to actually remove X11 compatibility completely from its desktop environment. As we were only hearing news, we finally see code being merged to support what they were saying. Dropping X11 support is a big deal because it ends decades of legacy graphical infrastructure. It's gonna force users and developers to adapt to the new modern Wayland protocol. It hopefully will enable modern security features for us. And there's definitely gonna be a friction in the transition. As mentioned, not all users are excited about this, but you can get excited today by leveling up your Linux experience. Check out my cheat sheet checklist and my map, including flashcards, all at SavvyNick.com. Download them today. And the GNOME team just updated us on the session removal of X11. In this post, we have, now the time has come. We went ahead and disabled the X11 session by default. And from now on, it needs to be explicitly enabled when building the affected modules, GNOME session, GDM, Mutter, GNOME shell, which we just reviewed. This does not affect X Wayland. It's only about X11 and X org session and related functionality. GDM's ability to launch other X11 sessions will be also preserved, which this is good news for X11 users. X Wayland is a, an X server that's designed to run X11 applications within a Wayland environment. It bridges that gap between legacy X11 applications and the newer Wayland display protocol or server. The fact that they're keeping this compatibility layer is crucial for users who still rely on X11 based applications and that have not been ported over to Wayland. Otherwise, this would be a massive mess. There are still a ton of applications that are not even available for Wayland, let alone optimized for the Wayland protocol. So it's good to see that we're not just going all in, we're still gonna be supporting X Wayland support, although we're dropping the legacy X11. And that is a big deal, because it's not all just great as there are limitations when it comes to Wayland versus X11. And ones that I've personally ran into that are issues are things like one, screen capturing. With the way that Wayland restricts global access, to applications, things like OBS, Zoom, Discord, need special APIs or portals in order to actually capture the screen. With permission issues, I've personally had OBS permission issues in the past when using some desktops with Wayland and had to resort to using X Wayland. Remote desktop, a lot of people talk about this one as there's no built-in remote access support like X11 VNC or X forwarding over SSH. This requires special servers like RDP, the remote desktop protocol, and it makes it hard for remote GUI development over SSH because of no built-in support. Other things that I've ran into is Wayland is just not as easy to use when trying to use some windowing features, overlaying or trying to get some properties for what layer a window is located in can be a frustrating experience and causes tools such as like XRander for the X11 windowing system to not be fully capable. It'd be awesome if we had something like WRander, which would allow us to make changes through the command line to the desktop's resolution or screen size. This is a wonderful feature that I've used multiple times in the past to even change things up remotely for a screen. It's a fantastic tool and feature that X11 provides, but with the way the Wayland protocol exposes its properties in API, it just doesn't allow for remote control like X11 did. They're still working on things like fractional scaling, and just recently introduced HDR support, so it's very minimal. Regardless, these are some of the limitations and frustrations that people have when using Wayland versus X11, but it's improving fast, and many of these limitations are being addressed. If you're a power user, streamer, or have NVIDIA hardware right now, it might be worth sticking with X Wayland at the very least, or enabling X11, as you will have the ability to do this You'll just have to rebuild things, which really sucks, especially if you're using GNOME. You might be switching to a whole different desktop environment. Either way, let's now talk about limitations specifically for NVIDIA users 
as there are still missing driver requirements, performance and stability bugs, limited compositor support, and multi-GPU support being completely finicky. And some Wayland users deny this, but here it is directly from NVIDIA, the current limitations using Wayland with the 575 driver release series. So we talk about specific Wayland protocol or compositor limitations. The features that don't currently work on Wayland include stereo rendering using GLX, EGL, or Vulkan. This is for 3D displays. We also have implicit SLI mosaic. As it says here, this feature refers to when applications present to virtual display, which is tiled across multiple physical displays. We also have NVIDIA settings, which has reduced functionality as it cannot manage displays like the tool can in X11. A few things that are currently available via the Vulkan Direct to Display is some stereo rendering, Vulkan Explicit SLI, swap groups, frame lock and gen lock, and things that are currently in the pipeline but don't still work are the NVIDIA DRM mode set, display multiplexers, advanced display pipeline features including warp blend pixel shift and color encoding or range, NVIDIA DRM presentation timing info, V, DPAU support on Wayland and vGPU support on Wayland, which are pretty big things for some people. I mean, virtual GPU support using the NVIDIA driver doesn't exist. That's a big deal for things like virtual machines. But regardless of whether or not we want to make the switch, it is happening. The drop of X11 being the de facto windowing system and going towards a newer Wayland protocol that's more modern and secure, offering better isolation between apps, no more global input or output access by default, a cleaner code base that is maturing and actively developed, I foresee more and more desktop environments and distributions dropping the X11 support. This is going to end decades of legacy graphical infrastructure. It's going to force users and developers to adapt to the new Wayland protocol. There's definitely going to be some growing pains with this one, but if you still need X11 on Ubuntu, we understand that some users still depend on Xorg's implementation of X11. For example, in remote desktop setups, like I spoke about before, or highly specialized workflows, AKA properties that aren't available by Wayland. If you require Xorg specifically, you can install the non GNOME desktop environment. Xorg itself is not going away, only GNOME support for Xorg. This doesn't mean that X11 applications will not work anymore on Ubuntu. X11 is supported by X Wayland and most X11 applications will run the Ubuntu Wayland session transparently. In many cases, no changes are needed. Again, unless you're using remote desktop setups or highly specialized workflows, you're not gonna notice a big change. Although if there are some limitations on the NVIDIA graphics driver side, you will see some of these issues as mentioned before. But either way, I want to know what you think about GNOME and Ubuntu 2510 dropping support for GNOME on Xorg. In the comments section below, let me know what you think about this whole deal. And on your way back up, make sure to subscribe below and smash that like button for more videos like this. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.